My name is Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, we are here with, shockingly, I know, some tech news from the last 24 hours or so. So, we have for you today some news from TSMC, as they have revealed some plans for the future, which includes 5NM and 3NM. We've also got some disappointing news from AMD, a statement from Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, regarding Meltdown and Spectre, and finally, we have some very interesting GDDR6 on the way from Micron and some industry partners. But as I said, we are going to begin proceedings today by discussing TSMC. Unsurprisingly, TSMC are doing rather well for themselves and they are looking to continue that trend as they are busy laying plans for a new groundbreaking facility in southern Taiwan. This particular one is going to produce 5NM panels, which obviously is expected to produce, sorry, produce, succeed 7NM. Now, unfortunately, these aren't going to be available until 2020, and trial production is going to be begin in 2019, first quarter. So it's not something that's going to turn up on your doorstep tomorrow, but it is something they're planning for the future. So it seems we're going to be getting 10NM this year, low power plus, and 7NM likely to show itself next year. However, they are looking even further than that, as they're also going to begin construction in the same location for a 3NM fab about two years from now. So this is going to be the sort of last thing that the current head of the company, Morris Chang, does before he leaves the business, the current chairman to be more exact, excuse me. So basically, he's hoping to leave TSMC in a good state, looking forward to the future, and of course, benefiting their supply partners as well. So, interesting stuff, but obviously, it's not going to benefit us for quite some time. But still, it's always good to look to the future and see what's coming up. That's always one of the most interesting things about technology, as we just keep progressing, and there's always something interesting on the horizon, even if it's very, very, very far away on the horizon. So with that said, let's go on to our next item, which of course is AMD. Now, for those of you who pay att paid attention excuse me, during the Radeon RX Vega launch, you probably remember the words implicit primitive shader and the support that that particular piece of tech would require. Unfortunately, it has been delayed and delayed and delayed. It's got a, you know, it's got a real bad case of Mighty Number no. 9, I'll tell you that much. And for those of you who are wondering before I get into the actual news, primitive shaders are lightweight shaders that basically promise a performance gain in supporting games through various stuff within the shader itself. The technical details are not particularly relevant, I just wanted to say that's what primitive shaders are if perhaps you missed the announcement or what have you. However, at one of its 2018 CES interactions with the press, apparently, and again this is apparently, so do keep that in mind, AMD reportedly said that they had cancelled the implicit driver path for primitive shaders. Now, before you go, oh, really? The game developers are still going to be able to implement primitive shaders on AMD hardware, which will use an explicit API path. However, the implicit driver path was a more interesting tech as it could have provided some pretty nice performance gains to existing games and also helped cut down a lot of the work for developers in games development. Unfortunately, we don't have any reasons for this decision stated at the time. If I had to guess, given the fact that it's been delayed multiple times, they just can't get it working the way that they should. You know, maybe there's major issues that just can't be solved right now, and this tech kind of needs to be put on the back burner until whatever issue it is can be solved. That's kind of what I think. They were hoping to get this sorted out and ironed out whatever bugs or whatever there are sorted out in time for Vega, but obviously... That's not happened, and it seems, if the statement is true, that implicit drivers are not going to be seeing the light of day. Of course, again, we can still get primitive shaders using explicit, but implicit was the more interesting tech, as I already said. So, a bit of a shame, but not going to drown the world in tears anytime soon, but definitely a disappointing one, especially for Vega fans. However, let's move swiftly on from that to Intel shall we? It's no secret that Intel kind of had a bad time of it recently with Meltdown and Spectre. 
And now we have some comments from Linus Torvalds, as I said at the start of the video, is the creator of Linux. Now, unsurprisingly, given that he is the creator of Linux, all of his comments here are regarding Linux and, of course, what's going on there with Meltdown and Spectre, so do keep that in mind. However, he has called the most recent patches for both Meltdown and Spectre vulnerabilities, quote, complete and utter garbage. And this actually happened in a rather public chainmail with David Woodhouse, who is an Amazon engineer. And he went on to call Intel's fix insane, and went on to also question its intent behind making the patch toggleable. Basically, any admin can disable the patch, which is very questionable. I can definitely see his concern there, because obviously Meltdown and Spectre are really serious vulnerabilities, and they can, you know, bring down major corporations if they're left, you know, a, there just waiting for someone to just take the chance to exploit them. And there are also issues, apparently, according to Devolds, with redundant fixes to vulnerabilities, which has already been patched by Google Project Zero, of course, to guys who started this whole thing, or by discovering it, and they have a ret uh, sorry repoline or repoline whatever technique which has already sorted these issues. So basically, the patch is already it's fixing something that's already been fixed by a different technique, according to what Torvalds was actually saying. And David Woodhouse, while kind of arguing a little bit with what Linus was saying, did admit that there isn't really a good reason for Intel to have left these patches to be opt-in. And to be honest with you, looking at it myself, I don't see the logic behind that at all. What good reason would someone have to not have that turned on? There's no good reason for that that I can see. Because even if it's having a performance impact, I don't know about you, but I would take a performance impact over just leaving it there ready to be exploited at any moment. I mean, especially if you are in a major corporation. But that's just me. I don't really see the logic there at all. Now, you can read the chainmail yourself. As I said, it is public. It's extremely long. I have given you very much the cliff notes, but if you want to give it a read, there will be a link in the description below this video. So if you want to give the description, uh, sorry, the discussion a read and see what David Woodhouse had to say in con to counter what Linus was saying, then please do check out the description as it is there. But safe to say he did not have very kind words for the patches on Linux. Again, this is not affect Windows. He is understandably addressing Linux here, given his you know area of expertise. However, let's move on to what I would say is the most interesting topic of today's video, and that is, of course, Micron and GDDR6. Now, I don't know about you guys. Now, while Micron do do storage as well, when I think Micron, I think memory, and that is obviously what they have been hard at work on. Now, they have announced today that they, alongside a few other companies, are going to be working together to deliver a comprehensive solution for GDDR6. And these other companies are Rambus Inc., Northwest Logic, and Avery Design. This is going to be a first-of-its-kind solution, which is going to enable GDDR6 to be used in advanced applications such as autonomous vehicles, AI, 5G infrastructure, and high-performance networking. Now, obviously, we've had numerous iterations of, or generations to be more exact, I suppose, of GDDR memory, but these have been focused exclusively on the graphics market. Obviously, this has helped us as gamers out a huge deal, as, of course, it has had a lot of both graphics cards and game console designs and, obviously, PCs in general and just that side of things to take advantage of the significant performance advantage that can be gleaned by GDDR. However, not being able to be used quite so well by other applications because just those, those building blocks just weren't there. It wasn't really designed to be used in that way. So basically, these companies are working together to solve this problem and basically make GDDR6 more useful to more people and stretch it beyond the graphics market, which obviously is a sort of main target for it at the moment. So obviously... Micron's bringing the memory, Rambus is bringing the PHY, Northwest is bringing the controller, and Avery is bringing the verification IP. So basically, they're each bringing a skill to the table to work together to help, you know, as I said, make GDDR6 more useful in more applications. And if it benefits us as gamers as well, great. If not, then, well, you know, they've already been focused on us for years, excuse me, so I suppose we can't really complain too much. So... 
basically, we're going to be getting a powerful, cost-efficient, and low-risk solution, which is going to be made available at the very top end, and undoubtedly we'll see this used in self-driving cars and that sort of thing, which we have seen a lot of people, especially Intel and NVIDIA, talking about at their latest conferences. Now, there are various quotes from each, or, or people from each of the companies, I should say, but unfortunately, they don't really go into the nitty-gritty of what we can actually expect performance wise specs wise unsurprising given that you know obviously this has literally just been announced so you know unless they've got a crystal ball hanging around they're not exactly going to be like yes this is going to be amazing this is going to make skynet a reality wait maybe we shouldn't do this but in all seriousness guys there is a link to micron's website in the description below this video as well as of course the linux room from earlier which will give their quotes and a bit more information but i've given the most interesting parts i would say and this is definitely going to be interesting for the future maybe not for gamers but obviously this is not just a gaming channel it is just a, it is also a tech channel and i find this really really interesting the fact that they're taking this thing it's like hey this technology is really cool and it's really great that we've been able to improve you know graphics and gaming with this but what if we were able to make it more useful to more people and they're working together to see if they can do that, obviously. Many, probably be many, many, many years before we see anything. However, I am still quite intrigued, and I'm sure many of you are as well. Anyway, that is me done for this particular video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated. Do consider checking us out over on patreon.com for slash redgamingtake and throwing us a dollar. But even if you don't, do know that your likes, subscribes, and of course views mean a great deal to both Paul and I. Your support really, really does make a huge difference. So thanks again for watching, and bye for now.